Hello everyone. On this video, we will be using ratios and proportions to solve some practical problems. All right, so for this first example, if you have one gallon of paint, oh, let me clean that E up a little bit, there you go. And you know it will cover 820 square feet how many gallons will be needed to cover 2,650 square feet with two coats? Okay, now we're going to assume that you can't buy a fraction of a gallon. So we're going to round it up to the nearest gallon. All right, so what I want you to do is go ahead and press pause and try to tackle this one on your own. All right, so assuming you've pressed pause and at least gave this one a try, let's go ahead and verify your answer. Okay, so we know we're going to use ratios and proportion. And we know that one gallon will cover 820 square feet. So one gallon is to 820 square feet as. We don't know how many gallons, so we'll say X number of gallons is to 2,650 square feet. All right. So now we just have to set this up as a proportion. So we're going to take this and set it up as a proportion. So one gallon is to 820 square feet as x number of gallons is to 2,650 square feet. Okay, so we set up our proportion. Now we cross multiply. Okay, so you have 820 times x equals 2,650 times 1 or just 2,650. We don't have to put the times one there. Okay, so now we go ahead and we divide both sides. By 820, so we can isolate our unknown variable x. So divide this side by 820 and this side by 820. Anything divided by itself is equal to 1. So 820 divided by 820 is 1. And that gives us 1 times x, or just x, is equal to 2,650 divided by 820. And if we divide that, we'll end up with approximately 3.5. Two three gallons for one coat of paint. Okay, so that's how much we would use for one coat of paint. Okay, but remember, we want to put two coats on there. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we multiply this by two because if this gives us one get one coat. Then we know if we double it, we'll get two. Okay, so we have 3.23 times 2. Okay, 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. We have two decimal digits, so we're going to move the decimal point twice. So we have 6.46 gallons of paint for two coats. Okay, now remember, let me scroll up a little bit. You can't buy a fraction of a gallon. So there's no way you can buy 46 hundredths of a gallon or maybe half a gallon. You can't buy half a gallon. Okay, so that means we have to round up to the nearest gallon. So you will need seven gallons. 
of paint. Okay, and that's for two coats. Now, if you were just doing one coat, you would need four because you can't get 0.23 gallons. So you have over three gallons, so you need four gallons if you were doing one coat. But because you're doing two coats, you would have to get seven gallons of paint. All right, and that's your final answer. All right, so if you are still writing this, of course, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our next example. Okay, so for this example, it says the paper needed for a printing job weighs 12 pounds per 500 sheet. How many pounds of paper are needed to run a job requiring 12,500 sheets of paper? All right, so once again, I want you to go ahead and press pause and try this one on your own. All right, so assuming you've already solved this one, let's go ahead and verify. Okay, so we know that 12 pounds means we have 500 sheets. So 12 pounds is to 500 sheets as, okay, so we have how many pounds? So we have some unknown pounds. We said x pounds, you can use any variable letter you want, is to, uh oh, clean, get that little more room, there we go, is to 12,500 sheets. All right, so now we take this and write it as a proportion. 12 pounds is to 500 sheets as X pounds is to 12,500 sheets. Let's move this up. Okay, so now we have our proportion, so we can go ahead and cross multiply. So you have 500 times X. is equal to 12,500 times 12. Okay, so we know that 12 times 12,500 is 150,000. So you have 500X is equal to 150,000. All right, so we divide both sides by 500 to isolate our unknown. We divide this side by 500 and this side by 500. So anything divided by itself is just 1. So we have 1 times x, or just x, is equal to 150,000 divided by 500, which is equal to 300. Okay, so we know that if your job requires 12,500 sheets of paper, then X is equal to 300 pounds. Of paper. All right, so. Once again, if you are still writing this, feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and move on to our last example. All right, so for this one, if 100 grams of ice cream contains 13 grams of fat, then how much fat is in 250 grams of ice cream? All right, so once again, I want you to go ahead and press pause and try this one on your own. All 
All right, so I'm assuming you've already worked this one out. So let's go ahead and verify your answer. So we have 100 grams of ice cream that has 13 grams of fat. So we know that 100 grams is to 13 grams of fat. As we don't know how much fat is in 250 grams of ice cream. So we have 250 grams of ice cream is to some unknown number grams of fat. Okay, so remember, this one's a little bit tricky because they put the fat first and then the grams of ice cream. But you want to have 100 grams of ice cream to grams of fat as 100 grams of ice cream to grams of fat. So you don't want to switch up the units of measure. Okay, so you don't want to have X grams of fat and 250 grams of ice cream here, and then you have the grams and the fat switched around up top. Okay, so you want to make sure they're in the right order. Okay, so this is one of the little tricky parts that you will you will see. All right, so we're going to take this and we're going to create our proportion. 100 grams is to 13 grams of fat. 100 is to 13 as, oh, let me move this up a little bit, 250 is 2x. All right, so now we go ahead and we cross multiply. So you have 100 times x is equal to 13 times 250. Okay, so 250 times 13 is 3,250. So we divide both sides by 100 to isolate our unknown variable. Anything divided by itself is just 1. So 1 times x, or just x, is equal to 3,250 divided by 100. 3,250 divided by 100 is just 32.5. All right, so x is equal to 32.5 grams of fat. All right, so 250 grams is to 32.5 grams of fat. All right, so hopefully this made sense to you, and I will see you on the next video.